So this set of lectures is going to be about pathogenesis. And uh, a pathogen is something that causes a disease, um, pathos, from pathos. Uh, and uh, so pathogenesis is how a disease happens. Uh, and specifically what we're going to talk about here is the mechanisms of how a microbe becomes a disease. And there's basically a few steps that it has to have, right? So um, <clears throat> the, the microbe has to be somewhere outside of you. Somewhere outside you. Um, and like there are different places where it could be when it's not in you. Uh, it has to get in. And then it has to cause disease. And then it has to get out. And then it has to get around. Basically to transfer from one person to the next person. However it is that that's going to happen. And in this lecture, we're going to talk about somewhere outside you, where a disease is when it's not in you. So um, what we call these are reservoirs of disease. That's basically where the pathogen is when the pathogen isn't in you. And, um, you know, it kind of depends on exactly what type of pathogen it is, whether we're talking about a fungi or a protozoa or a virus or a bacteria, they're going to have different options. Um, but generally speaking, like, you know, the only place a disease lives is probably not in you. You are probably not the only place where a disease lives. Um, so, uh, at least hopefully. And they're going to spend some time outside of a host. Um, all, most of them will spend some time outside of a host. And all of them will spend some time outside of you specifically or whoever is... Um, uh, is, is the patient, specifically. So, where is this? So, there's a few different options. One is animal reservoirs. Uh, this means that when they aren't in you, they are in another non-human animal. Um, these diseases are termed zoonoses. And these are usually diseases that are acquired by contact with animals. And keep in mind that insects are animals. So this in includes diseases that are, like when they're not in you, they're in insects. These diseases are usually not going to be spread from human to human. Um, though they're often spread from animal to animal, and humans are what we call a dead-end host, meaning we can't transfer them. Um, and these might be things like, uh, you know, potentially rabies. Uh, humans can give rabies to one another, but it's extremely, extremely rare. Um, in any instance of rabies is rare, but, uh, humans giving it to each other is extremely rare. Uh, you know, it could be malaria where, you know, you get it from mosquitoes. You can't catch malaria from another person, uh, or something like that. Uh, and some of them are spread by direct contact to animals. Maybe you get uh, bit by an animal or stung by an animal. And, and some of them may be spread by animal waste products. For instance, 
hantavirus, which is endemic to rodents, uh, is spread to humans through dust generated by rodent feces. Um, so uh, these diseases are often going to manifest differently in humans than they do in their animal hosts. Uh, some of them will produce more severe symptoms in humans, uh, and some of them might produce less. But uh, generally speaking, these zoonoses are... Um, the animals are often asymptomatically infected, right? This is just maybe something that's like a natural flora for the animal, or a common flora for the animal. But when it gets into humans, because humans didn't like evolve with it right there inside of you. Um, the, the human host's immune system reacts rather poorly to it. Um, oh yes, uh, eating the animal. There are some diseases, uh, often viruses, that can be uh, passed on through uh, improperly cooked animal meat. Tapeworms also fall into this category. So, some common zoonoses, right? So, tapeworms, malaria, toxoplasmosis, one of my favorites, uh, anthrax sometimes, although anthrax also has an environmental reservoir, as we'll talk about. Um, Lyme disease from deer ticks, uh, rabies, yellow fever from mosquitoes, those sorts of things. So another option is uh, human carriers. Some diseases, particularly viruses, but a few bacteria as well, cannot exist outside of a human host. And so when they aren't in you, they're in some other human. Herpes is a great example of that, right? Herpes is a virus, it can't survive on its own, it's an obligate intracellular parasite, and it only infects humans. So if it's like not in you, it's because it's in some other human. And the only way that you're going to get it is through contact with some other human who has it. Um, so people can actively experience a disease and can transfer microbes from one person to another person. Uh, it is very common for some diseases to be asymptomatic in some people. Uh, for instance, most STDs are asymptomatic in one sex or the other, uh, or at least are often asymptomatic in one sex or the other, or sometimes both. Uh, and many diseases have periods of latency. Um, you can also have opportunistic pathogens, which can be transferred from one person to another, and the first person might not be sick because maybe their immune system is healthy, and the second person might not get sick right away because their immune system is healthy, but then uh, the second person's immune system becomes compromised, and the disease can take advantage of that. So we call people who have the... Um, uh, basically who have the pathogen present in their body or on their body, but who are not experiencing symptoms, carriers. And um, most people are carriers of something most of the time. Uh, you are probably carrying some pathogens that you are unaware of right now. Uh, if you work in a doctor's office or a hospital, it's almost certain that you have several potentially pathogenic bacteria on you at all times, um, and they can be passed from one person to another. Environmental reservoirs. Right? These mean that when the pathogen is not in you, it is in some sort of non- uh, animal area, right? Uh, so it could be in land, it could be in uh, water, unlikely to be in air. Like some bacteria and things can spread through dust, but dust only remain in the air for a very short period of time. So we're usually going to be talking about it being in the water or the soil. Um, and 
and uh, and like that's where the bacteria or the whatever normally lives, and it gets into you through some sort of contact with that element. Um, sometimes humans will be an important part of their life cycle. Uh, sometimes they won't, and they're just like trying to do their thing, their microbe thing, living in the environment, and you know they happen to get introduced into a wound or something like that, and they freak out and start making toxins or causing infection or whatever. Um, so some examples of this is uh, the tetanus, clostridium, uh, botulinum, um, let's see, uh, anthrax, uh, pseudomonas. Those are all bacteria that can cause infection, but mostly just live in the soil. Uh, and there are a number of ones that live in the water as well. And that is the main reservoirs of disease. Like, pretty much, it, it's either got to be in another human, a non-human animal, or just, like, in the environment. I guess it's possible for it to be in a plant, but um, I can't really think of an instance of anything that infects both plants and humans. Maybe some fungi but uh, certainly no bacteria that I am aware of.